So you want to build a successful business, but you procrastinate. You struggle to do what you know needs to be done. You end up watching bloody YouTube videos like these instead of doing things that you know you should be doing. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the four step strategy that I have personally used to completely annihilate procrastination and eradicate that disease a mental disease from my life so that I can basically work. I've built two companies, an agency to seven figures and a coaching business to near enough eight figures now using this exact strategy. And there's four pieces of information and four pieces of advice systems or whatever you want to call them that will help you completely remove procrastination from your life once and for all. Let's get into the video. Four ways to completely eliminate procrastination from your life once and for all. Here's my YouTube re viewer retention strategy. You're going to love number four. Oh my God, you've got to wait to the end to get the best bit. I'm fucking with you. Right, they're all fucking useful. Let's get into the video. All right, so four ways to destroy procrastination from your life so that you feel actually worthwhile and unlike um, a loser who can't get anything done. All right. numero un, ambiguity. In order for you to do things, you have to be clear on them. Right, procrastination is rooted in ambiguity. Procrastination stems from ambiguity. If you don't know what you need to work on, then when you come to work on it, you have to think about it. And the thinking acts as the method of procrastination. Let me explain. If I decide tomorrow that I'm going to create a VSL, what I can do whilst making a decision to do it tomorrow is think through the, the brief or broad structure of the VSL. If I decide tomorrow that I'm going to start cutting, Right, if I just, not, not self-harm, to be able, to be transparent, not that, cutting in the body sense. If I decide tomorrow, like I'm gonna start dieting tomorrow, it helps at the same time as making a decision to get some thought done. Because in order, like if you, if you have to do a behavior, if you have to think about what to do with that behavior before you do it, then you immediately create a barrier. To the dispersion of cognitive energy is now the barrier between you doing the thing you need to do. So when it comes to actually doing the thing, there needs to be no sort of like resistance in the way, right? For example, with me making these YouTube videos, I always have my camera set up, right? I have everything plugged in. I have my mic ready. I, all I have to do is open my laptop, go on OBS and then start recording. If every time I wanted to make a YouTube video, I had to unpack my setup, set up my desk, do this, do that, think through what I was gonna actually make the video about, script out the video and then do the video, there's no way I would do it. So preparation is more important than action most of the time. Ah, uh, that's an exaggeration, it's not entirely true, but you get the point. Procrastination stems from ambiguity, so you need to be crystal clear on what you're gonna do, right? So the way that I actually do this for my day is I use this daily planner, right? Very simple, I built this for myself. I basically plan out each half an hour of the day. So what I'm gonna do at seven, what I'm gonna do at half five, what I'm gonna do at 19.30. And then what this means is that my days are no longer chaos. If, if, I'm, if I'm halfway through the afternoon and I start to get lost a little bit, all I do is I look at my daily planner, what should I be doing right now? Oh, that's what I should be doing and I go back to doing it. So you want to do the thinking the day before or you want to do the thinking before you decide to do the action. So here's how it should work. You decide that the action needs to be done. Then you think it through, right? So you think like, to do this action, what do I need to do? What are the steps? What do I need to have in place to do it? What needs to be done? You think it through and then you act. But here's the thing, right? What most people do is like, you don't just suddenly spring into action. You know that there's a task that needs to be done and usually like it's probably for tomorrow or later on this afternoon, or later on today. You want to do the thinking just after doing the deciding. So if you say, all right, um, tomorrow, like I'm planning my day and tomorrow I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do 200 cold calls. Well, what you should do is go to, before you go to bed, open up tabs on your laptop with your leads, with your script and your dialer. So when you wake up in the morning, all you have to do is open your laptop. You don't even have to think about opening the tabs. You don't even have to think about where you're gonna get the leads from. You don't even have to think about like what script you're gonna use or what dialer you're gonna use. You don't even have to log into the dialer. It's already done. Bang, the thinking's done, the preparation's done, you can spring straight into action. You can invert this. If you if you want to procrastinate, just don't think through the action before you actually come down to sit down to do it. That's the first thing, ambiguity. Let's have a look at number two. Drum roll, please. Okay, this is one of my favorite ones. Self-image. Do you see yourself as someone who procrastinates? If so, you're fucked. Let me explain. In order for behavior to manifest, it has to be in alignment with your sense of identity and your sense of self-image. The easiest way to fix procrastination is you almost can pretty much do with anything that's bad in your life, is track it back to the belief system that feeds it. I want you to imagine this for a second. A belief, what could you call it? A belief or a pillar of your self-image 
is basically, imagine it's like an ocean. So imagine for a second that this is an ocean. From the ocean flow rivers, right? And just imagine these are rivers. I know it looks like um, Stewie Griffin if he was electrocuted, but let's not think about that, right? So then you have rivers that stem from this, this ocean. And these rivers are basically thought. So what this means is your beliefs create your thoughts. And what do your thoughts create? Your thoughts then go on to create your actions or lack thereof. If you, if you believe that I am, right, a procrastinator, I struggle with procrastination. If you have a belief system, like something in your brain, a perceived statement of truth that is solidified in ocean that aligns your identity with procrastination or procrastinator, what will happen is you will have thoughts about procrastinating and obviously those will then create the action that is procrastinating. So here's the funny thing, when people, when people procrastinate, they think they're not doing anything, but by procrastinating, you are doing something, right? So great way to solve this is get to the root of the problem and fix the self-image. So how, how do you fix your self-image? Well, that's a, that's a rather Freudian question, Jungian question, but the way to do it is to start out right now, action item for you, right? Right now, do it now, because I don't, the irony is, is that if you fucking procrastinate on a action that helps you solve procrastination, you are an idiot. So now, right now, I want you to go and pause this video and I want you to write down everything you believe to be true about procrastination in yourself. So how, like every statement of truth, right? I am a procrastinator. I struggle with procrastination. Procrastination is annoying. Procrastination has always been part of my life. Everyone procrastinates, right? Just find these perceived statements of truth. Just think about it for a second and all I have to do is ask you like, oh, what's your opinion on procrastination? What's your relationship with procrastination? Write them all down. And then what you are doing now is by looking at those beliefs, you can now see the problem. Your procrastination stems from those beliefs because those beliefs create the thoughts which create the actions or lack thereof, okay? So write them down. And then what you want to do is you want to flip them. So you have one piece of paper for the current belief system, one um, piece of paper for the new belief system. All we're doing is we are inverting the restricting and limiting beliefs into new ones. So if your belief right now is I am a procrastinator, right? You would then flip that and you'd write a new belief that basically says procrastination is nothing to me. I've never, I, I, I never procrastinate. I don't even know what procrastination is. I don't even recognize it. I don't even see it as a force. And then what you want to do every morning, right? For the rest of your life until you solve the problem, um, you know, a year or a couple of months, whatever, is read through that belief, the new belief system. So you read every single day, I do not procrastinate. I am not a procrastinator. And then when you say that, you shut your eyes and you just literally just imagine yourself doing some work and make it vivid and shit. And dude, if you tell yourself you're not a procrastinator and you tell other people that you're not a procrastinator and you consistently, ruthlessly repeat the new belief system over and over again, what will start to happen is you'll behave differently. Because if you start seeing yourself as someone who doesn't procrastinate, it's impossible to procrastinate. It's called praxis. We give assent to belief through action, right? So if you can do this for anything, by the way, any behavior. You know, you struggle, like, dude, If uh, this is why I don't like common ways of dealing with addictions and mental health issues. It's always a belief system problem. If, I, if I'm trying to get rid of a bad habit, right, um, like a long time ago, I got rid of porn, like a long, long time ago. And I did that by basically saying, I looked at my current belief system for porn, and I looked at my new one. And then I created a new one, and I was like, porn disgusts me. Porn is filthy. I hate porn. Porn has no meaning in my life. Porn is the worst thing in the world. And then if you just repeat that over and over again, then you're no longer a, someone who like in any way, so, shape or form associates with something like porn or procrastination or whatever it might be. Even just saying the word makes me feel sick, right? And that's because I've engineered my belief system in that way. Your beliefs can change. You can, you can shift them, you can change your mind. If you don't believe me, then you need to work on the belief that is about beliefs, right? So self-image, Fix that and you'll fix everything. Fuck ambiguity, fuck point three and four. If you just fix this, you won't ever struggle with procrastination again, all right? Numero toi. This is a pretty obvious one, doing it first. So doing it first, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You probably know what you need to do and you're procrastinating on. Just do it first. Do it before you do anything. This is gonna sound slightly unhygienic, but if you work for yourself, right, and let's say that you're procrastinating cold calling, for example, and you know that each day you need to make 100 cold calls to build your company. I want you to wake up and before, as, literally as you roll out of bed, start making cold calls. Before you brush your teeth, before you shower, before you eat breakfast, 
before you even say hello to your dog, I don't care what it is, burn no cognitive calories on anything that isn't the main thing first thing in the morning, okay? No willpower should be exercised in any other direction than the main thing. Example, case in point, these YouTube videos that I make, right? I do these first thing in the morning. Not first, first thing, because if I tried to make a YouTube video literally just after I got out of bed, you'd probably think I was some sort of patient and had a problem. So I do sauna, I cold plunge first, and then I get straight to it. But before I do any other form of work, this is the first thing I do because it's the most important thing for the growth of my company. And I also quite like it. So just do it first. Oh, but Charlie, I can't because I need to, like I have to have my muesli, otherwise I feel sick. Then feel sick. Just like what makes you feel more sick? Not eating food for the first hour of the day or not having the success you want because you put something off. No excuses, all right? That's a pretty simple one, just do it first. Last but not least, mate, I'm gonna have a little rant at you. And I want you to basically remember this as a video and a point in this video at which you can return. So think about this, mate. But I would argue that procrastination is the greatest form of ungratefulness, right? Because here's the thing, right? You have been given a life, right? By God, by the universe, whatever. But let's take this down a notch, away from God, away from the universe. Your parents brought you into this world and suffered to bring, they suffered through your childhood to bring you up. Now, I don't know what your relationship is like with your parents, so maybe this is not, not a strong form of motivation, and I will attack you from multiple angles. But, mate, do you know how many people have fucking suffered and put, do you know how much time and effort certain people in your life have put into you? To procrastinate and to, to basically shit away your potential because you couldn't be bothered is the most disgustingly ungrateful thing that you could possibly do in any way, shape or form. Your mum, your dad, your, I don't know, maybe maybe you haven't got mum or dad, maybe, maybe you've got friends, maybe it's mentors, maybe it's me, I don't care. Do you know how much people have given for you? You're gonna sit there on your ass and not do anything with your life. It's the biggest middle finger to, to people who care for you, in my opinion. And not only that, but do you know how fucking lucky you are to be alive? And to have, to have the consciousness and the able-bodied mind to watch and comprehend a YouTube video like this. Do you know how fucking, do you have, do you have any idea just how fortunate you are to be on this planet? You, my friend, have been given the gift of life, which is given to about seven billion people, which might sound like a lot, but in the scheme of things, it's not. You've been born into the single greatest time in history for human advancement and enterprise. You've been given a body, you've been given a mind, you've been given um, what I'm hoping is potentially a stable environment, but you can't be bothered? Dude, like, fucking reciprocate, man. <laughs> like, all you've got to do is just do some fucking work. I would be altruistic, you know? Like, the universe, man, has fucking given you life. What what you have at present is potential, right? You, you are just, a, a ball of potential. Trust me, if you don't do anything with that, when you get to 40 years old, 50, 60, 70 years old, you will be miserable. Right now you can get away with procrastinating because you're like, oh, like, yeah, it's just, I'll just do it tomorrow. But tomorrow eventually becomes 50 years old. Then you're miserable. Give you another angle of motivation. You're probably gonna have children. You're probably gonna have a wife or a husband. When that happens, are they gonna thank past version of you? You know, your future wife? Man, future husband, woman, future husband, man, whatever, I don't care. When you're gonna, are you gonna look your kids in the eyes when in 20 years time and tell them that you worked as hard as you did so they could have the life they have, <laughs> right? Are you gonna, are you going to be able to give the people that you love and the life you bring into this world the best quality of life and the, the smallest amount of suffering possible? The answer to that question depends on how heavily you procrastinate. I don't think people quite gauge and understand the, de the, the level of devastation that procrastination brings because it's subtle and it doesn't feel too painful right now. But if you could see the long-term time horizon and second order consequence of not filling the day and doing all that could be done today, you, my friend, are gonna be in some real trouble. So I just wanted to find my wallet because in here I've got a part of a book that I ripped out probably about six years ago. And I've kept this in my wallet. It's, it's actually stayed in relatively good condition. But I've kept this in my wallet ever since. It's from um, The Science of Getting Rich, right? So one of those like weird um, Napoleon Hill style things. But I read this, um, this page here. Basically after reading this, I didn't, really, I didn't really struggle with procrastination ever again. So I'm gonna read it to you. You must use your thought as directed in previous chapters and begin to do 
what you can do where you are, and you must do all that you can do where you are. You can advance only by being larger than your present place. And no man is larger than his present place who leaves undone any of work pertaining to that place. The world is advanced by only by those who fill more than their present spaces. When an organism has more life than can be expressed in the functions of its own plane, it develops organs of a higher plane and the new species is, orig is originated. There would not have been a new species had there not been organisms which filled more than their places. The law is exactly the same for you. Your getting rich depends on your applying this principle to your own affairs. Every day is either a successful day or a day of failure, and it's a successful day to get you what you want. If every day is a failure, you cannot get rich, but every day is a success, you cannot fail to get rich. So what that basically means is like, fill your place, right? How do you fill your place with action? So I say this to my team, right? We've got eight sales reps now. And I say to them, look, dude, if you, if you fill your place, if you, if you optimize yourself as hard as you possibly can, the opportunity for you to become a millionaire lies way too frequently in front of you. Yeah, fill your place. It's like the whole species thing. Like, I've just, dude, as soon as I read that, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like, I should probably be doing all that can be done every day without fail. And I'll leave you with a quote from my grandma. She says, um, do not put off tomorrow that which can be done today. I'm pretty sure she didn't come up with that, bless her, but she said it once. And because my grandma, I was like, okay, probably should do that. <laughs> it's another thing. It's like, the, it's like the gratefulness thing, man. Like my grandma raised my dad who raised me. And like, if I'm not doing it, all that can be done every day, I'm tarnishing my family's memory. <laughs> like I just, basically, I just feel really fucking guilty if I procrastinate because people have done so much for me and the, the best way for me to give back to them is to manifest my potential in the most aggressive and extreme fashion possible because that will create pride in them and nothing, trust me, man, nothing is more valuable and meaningful than knowing that your parents are proud of you. Trust me, like... <laughs> that will feel fucking good. And nobody is proud of someone that procrastinates. All right? If you need more clients, click the first thing in the description. I love you. Have a good day.